Hello everyone, welcome to Next Gen Console Watch Live from Gamescom. A quick reminder that if you missed anything during our show or want even more info and content on upcoming games, Gamescom Now has you covered. Plus, you can take part in the Gamescom Epics Quest and win goodies and prizes, and best of all, it's all completely free. You can head over to now.gamescom.global to find out more, but right now, let's discuss the big news of the day with my friends, Jonathan Dornbush and Ryan McCaffrey. Hello, guys. Hey, Damon. It's good to see you in a real studio, Damon. It's, it's great. I know. I wish you guys were here. Maybe, maybe someday in the not maybe, hopefully someday soon. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about the biggest Gamescom announcements, the next gen announcements. Ryan, I think we've got to start with the Halo Infinite release date. We finally have one, December eighth. How do you feel about it? Uh, it's a surprise. I'll be mm -hmm. honest with you. Just, just in the sense, not that we've never had big games release in December before. Uh, Halo never has. Halo's always been November or September, but uh, usually history suggests that publishers want to try and get their game out before that big Black Friday mm -hmm. shopping weekend. But then again, times have changed, and uh, even Microsoft themselves says, hey, this is just the beginning launch. It's going to grow and evolve over time. I think they very much expect Halo Infinite to have a very long tail. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, December 8th, a little bit of a surprise. I mean, we already had a, a year long delay. Um, I thought they would, I really thought, in fact, on, the, on this show, I probably said that I thought that they would release it on November 15th, which, which would be the mm -hmm. exact 20th anniversary of Halo uh, and Halo 1, obviously. Uh, they needed a little more time. That is fine. Uh, but I'm just glad we got it because I uh, wasn't sure that we were going to get it because we got nothing about Halo at Xbox's own showcase on Tuesday. And then it took until Wednesday at Jeff Keighley's opening night live to finally get that information. Yeah. Hopefully this uh, this time it sticks. Of course, Halo Infinite was supposed to be a, a launch uh, game for the Xbox Series X. But December 8th, Fingers crossed, we're finally gonna get to play. But Ryan, what do you think about the fact that we, even though we got a few nice Halo announcements today, nothing on the campaign. So that's going on a year now since we've seen anything from the campaign. Yeah, yeah, that is fair. You're right. I mean, we got a kind of a sizzle reel of sorts at E3. So we did see sort of snippets, but not actual just moment to moment combat gameplay. You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. And my thinking is that after what happened last summer, right before they delayed the game, when they did show the campaign and it didn't go well, mm -hmm. uh, and we saw a big delay, I just feel like they know that they have to show, it has to show well the next, like they're, they're, they don't have another chance. Mm -hmm. This is gonna be it, uh, otherwise the, the public opinion on it's gonna really be tough to come back from. So I think they're probably just waiting until the game is really basically done. Now we've seen this with other games before and, uh, Sometimes it goes well and sometimes it doesn't. You know, I'm not going to say that this means anything good or bad for Halo. And there are still three months to go. Like, I, I would fully expect that we'll get uh, the media getting a chance to play this, play the campaign specifically, not the multiplayer that we've already played. I think we'll get a campaign hands on sometime in the next couple months ahead of that December release. But yeah, I get that it's disappointing, but I think they just want to get this thing as polished as humanly possible before they show it to the world again. Sure, and, and to their credit, Xbox seems to be being very transparent with their messaging around Halo Infinite. Um, yes. We also uh, got to see a, a special edition Xbox Series X and an Elite controller. I wanna talk about that in just a minute, but I want to bring Jonathan into this discussion because there was some big Sony news in the uh, opening Night Live uh, show this year as well. Uh, we got a release date finally for Horizon Forbidden West, which also served as a confirmation of its delay. Isn't that right? Yes, yeah, we got a February 18th, 2022 release date for Horizon, which uh, there had been reports a few weeks back uh, about a Horizon delay and Sony had never officially commented. Uh, and so this was their, uh, you know, confirmation of that, uh, that delay actually being true. Uh, but doing it in a way that wasn't letting the delay be the focus. And that's kind of why I think they didn't comment quickly after those reports came out was because they probably wanted to be sure about the actual release date they, they could give before saying we're just pushing it to 2022 because I think they wanted to give people something to be more assured about. And February 
is a good month for Horizon because that's when Horizon uh, Zero Dawn first debuted on the PS4 back in 2017, I believe. So it's not like Horizon can't succeed in February. We know it can, oh, sure. so it should still be a good launch month for it. Oh, sure. Yeah, it's, 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 it, I'm glad you mentioned uh, the February release because um, I wanted to point out that now with, with Halo Infinite coming December 9th, we have a situation where Xbox has a big holiday exclusive and PlayStation does not. Oh, I, of course, you're right. I don't want to forget Forza. You're right. Xbox has two big holiday exclusives. PlayStation has none. To be fair, uh, I don't think, I think it's been a long time since Sony really relied on holiday exclusives, right? God of War, Horizon, Zero Dawn, Last of Us Part Two, Uncharted 4 are all sort of earlier in the year spring releases, I believe. But they've got Deathloop. I've got a preview of that on IGN right now. Yep, That's there a timed is, PS5 exclusive there, if you want to check that out. There is game. Deathloop, which I am very excited for. It's just, you know, it's a September release. It doesn't really fit into the holiday window in my mind. But you're right. You're right. But I just, I just think it's interesting, Ryan. It, it just seems like we're, we are starting to see the fruits of Xbox's labors in, in producing the, uh, the exclusives that were uh, so sorely missing from the Xbox One generation, if you know what I mean. Yeah, completely. And, and I, uh, I wrote the, the op-ed about this that I think we talked about on the show after I wrote it about the, the drought finally being over for exclusive games because you, uh, you had the Ascent drop at the end of July. You had Flight Simulator as a next-gen exclusive for Series X and S only at the end of July. Uh, you have uh, Forza coming in November. In August, uh, 12 minutes, that's trying to blank for a second, 12 minutes I just reviewed, which I really liked a lot. That's an exclusive as well. And then, of course, Halo and uh, Sable we're still expecting in September as well. Uh, there's Crossfire X, which we got a new trailer, a new multiplayer trailer for that just said coming soon. So I don't know if that's still going to mean 2021 or not. But And then, uh, of course, Psychonauts 2, which technically isn't exclusive uh, due to that game being, of course, crowdfunded originally before Microsoft acquired it. And they are following through with releasing it on Sony platforms, but still a big first party release. So. Yeah, it's uh, it's been great to see that they've finally started to deliver on the first party and exclusive game promise that they've been making for years and years and years. And here we go. Now they're proving it. So, Jonathan, until this week, uh, Horizon Forbidden West was supposedly a big holiday release for for Sony. So how do you feel about the PlayStation 5 going forward throughout the rest of the year? Uh, I mean, in general, I'm not too worried about it. It's that thing of, as you said, there's a history of PlayStation not really having releases in the holiday window, uh, at least exclusives wise, uh, last year being an exception. And, you know, to sort of speak to that, I think anyone who's jumping on a PS5, they have Demon Souls to look forward to. They have Returnal to look forward to. They have Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart to look forward to. So anyone who's getting a PS5 this holiday has a pretty great lineup of exclusives already within the first year to jump on and, and pretty immediately enjoy, along with the cross-gen stuff like Spider-Man Miles Morales and a, yeah. and a few others. And of course, something like Astro's Playroom, which was packed in for free. So yeah. I don't think PlayStation is too worried. And as a PlayStation player, I'm not too worried, especially with a, a few indies on the way, stuff like uh, Jet the Far Shore, which was revealed back at the original PS5 showcase last year, is coming in October. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, PlayStation usually lets the third parties have the run of the place <laughs> during the fall. So I'm, I'm not too worried about it. Well, Ryan, uh, the Xbox Series X isn't uh, the only of these two next gen consoles getting a holiday exclusive this year. It's the only one getting a special edition so far. The first one to get a special edition for Halo Infinite. Yeah, that was a surprise. I'll, I'm going to be honest with you. That one caught me off guard. I was not ex uh, not surprised at all by the special edition controller. Mm -hmm. We just got that gorgeous Forza Horizon 5 limited edition controller on the Xbox broadcast the day before. But yeah, of course, sure, do a Halo Infinite controller. That's easy, no problem. I do like that it's an Elite controller, an Elite mm -hmm. Series 2. That makes me happy. But yeah, I just, uh, I was not expecting an actual console because of the ongoing fact that we've got this component shortage and consoles just are hard to come by every single one that these these companies can make they get sold and they just can't fulfill the demand uh, so I did not think they would they would use any of their uh, fire any of their bullets using just a special edition console but it's cool that they did I think it looks really neat I'd love to see it in person it looks like it's relatively understated but still definitely halo-y so um, yeah I I applaud them for doing it and yeah they they do get the <laughs> the, the nod as being the the first one to release a special edition console. The question is now, I guess, Jonathan, which which game will PlayStation 
give the honor to for having the first special edition PS5? Will it be Horizon or maybe uh, God of War a little later on next year? Mm-hmm. Yeah, both of them feel like big candidates for it. I was saying to Ryan before we started recording, I hope that they don't do special edition consoles this generation and take a page out of Xbox's 360 era and just let me buy plates that I can put on. Oh, yeah. Those those white fins, they come off the PS5. So let me put some God of War, you know, handprint ones on there without having to buy a whole new PS5. I'd be happy with that. There are some big third-party announcements for next-gen consoles. How about Marvel's Midnight Suns? We've had rumors of a... A uh, Marvel XCOM, XCOM game from Firaxis, and uh, we finally got revealed this week. Uh, let's start with you, Ryan. Does this, this one look appealing to you? Yeah, well, in the sense that it's going to be good, there's like a very, very <laughs> high probability because mm. uh, Firaxis' track record is, I don't believe they've ever made a bad game. They make XCOM, as you noted, mm-hmm. also the Civilization games. So they're really, really good at what they do. And thus, I have no doubt that that however this actually plays, because the the trailer didn't quite make it clear uh, what like exactly is it XCOM? Is it like a turn based tactics thing? But whatever it en- ends up being, it's it's probably going to be really good. So that alone has me eager to play because it's like, all right, if I can mix Ghost Rider with Wolverine and, uh, you know, all these other uh, uh, characters in the in the Marvel Universe, that's already you've got me interested. Sure. Uh, yeah, the pedigree of Firaxis is enough to pique my interest. They're being a little cagey. On, 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 they're just saying they're not really talking about gameplay yet. So we don't have a lot of specifics. Obviously, I don't think we should expect it to have the permadeath that XCOM games have. But uh, <laughs> Jonathan, how about you? I know you're a big fan of the Marvel movies. Yeah, I mean, you can't keep Wolverine down, so I wouldn't yeah. expect permadeath to yeah. be in there. Um, I, I loved this trailer. I, I've never actually been a huge XCOM fan person, if only because I was sort of intimidated by permadeath and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, So something that is a little more integrated into a universe that I really love uh, as a tactics fan has me really, really excited uh, and probably should make me go back and play XCOM because I know how great they are. Uh, But I I love the idea of this. I really like the visual style that they're going for uh, with their costumes and everything. I think this is ever since Marvel Games sort of rebranded itself uh, a few years back and and has had some hits and some misses for sure, this is the sort of thing that I've wanted them to keep doing sort of in success after seeing what happened with Insomniac Spider-Man, mm. which is just letting a developer with a really great pedigree make a game in the genre that they really know with the characters they want to use and, and let it be its own thing. They don't have to worry about it being an MCU-style interconnected thing across different companies and whatnot. They just get to make their own version of things and i'm really excited for that as ryan said Braxis has an amazing pedigree so i i can't wait and i'm glad it's not that far away it's only uh march yeah and then damon if i may give a shameless plug actually you heard jeff keely shouted out on stage mm-hmm. uh, ign we will have the gameplay premiere on september 1st at 11 30 a.m pacific so we're looking forward to debuting that perfect won't have to wait much longer for that either uh, okay, let's move on to something that, Ryan, I think you have had some uh, experience with, maybe not playing yourself, but uh, it's the Saints Row reboot uh, that was revealed yes. this week. I know you and I are both Saints Row the Third fans. Now, uh, after going through Saints Row 4 and Get Out of Hell and Agents of Mayhem, they're just rebooting the whole thing. New city, uh, new team of Saints starting their, their criminal enterprise and working their way you know, from the, the bottom up in this, in this new sandbox playground. So. Uh, it sounds cool to me. I really like Saints Row. I love, I love how goofy it is. It leans more into goofy than GTA does. But what was sort of your impression of it? Uh, well, being a so this is the, the age old Internet debate. And I've seen this play out on Twitter since this announcement <laughs> popped up, too, is you've basically got your Saints Row 2 camp. The people mm. that think Saints Row 2 and not think that that feel that that's that's their favorite Saints Row game. Mm. And then you've got people like you and I, Damon, who are, who are really we favor more of the Saints Row 3 style where it took it. A little further, but still like in the goofiness angle, but kept it grounded. I mean, the, you know, jumping out of the plane to Kanye's power. I mean, that that's that's like peak Saints Row as, as far as I'm concerned. And my sense of this, because I was lucky enough to get a behind closed doors demo of actual gameplay, which we didn't really get to see at opening night live. Uh, I definitely got the sense that it's it's leaning more towards three than two or certainly than four. So that makes me happy. Uh, we'll see how the the new you know characters end up playing out and and the new Saints gang as it were. But insurance fraud is back, so that alone should make 
everybody happy whether you like two or three the best because that's always been the most fun mini game the most fun activity in saints row so yeah i mean i'm happy to have it in a new city we'll see if the new characters are as endearing as johnny gat and and the crew uh or pierce you know singing along in the car that's yeah. one of the more yeah. fun missions from three so that remains to be seen, but yeah, I'm I'm optimistic for, based on what I've seen so far. Yeah, I, I love open world sandbox games in general. So as long as they don't dial the goofiness back too much, I, I think I'll, I'll be pleased. Someone that I follow online uh, referred to Saints Row as uh, GTA played with a, a game genie, and I liked I liked that sort of description of it. But Jonathan, how about you? Are you a, a Saints Row guy? Uh, I played Saints Row the Third quite a bit and yeah. a little bit of Four, and so I that's very much the Saints Row that I know. Uh, and so if it can sort of hit some of those vibes, but maybe bring in some of what people really enjoyed about one and two. I'm, I'm all for that. I, uh, it, I, I think there was a good blend of sort of style and identity here. Like I pretty immediately got the vibe of what this game is. Uh, and yeah, as Ryan mentioned, the sort of jumping out of the helicopter to power is what I think of when I think of Saints Row. So as long as they can kind of make marquee moments like that within this universe, make it something a little bit wackier, uh, but still really engaging. I'm I'm all for that. I there's strangely a fewer uh, open world modern games that are very much like GTA. Mm -hmm. It feels like these yeah. days. So I'm I'm excited to have one that is a bit more of a stalwart come back like this. Yeah, a generation or two ago, the market was just flooded with uh, GTA clones. But you're right, they've uh, they sort of thinned out that pack. Um, what about uh, Lego Star Wars or, the, or the, the Skywalker saga, Lego Star, Lego Star Wars? This one has been a long time coming. I think it's gotten a couple of delays. Nice to get an update on it. I think it looks great. And it's nice that they're starting to lock down a, a target release window, but it's still uh, a little bit up in the air. I think they're just they're targeting spring 2022. So it's still ways off. Uh, still don't have a lockdown date, but I think it looks like a lot of fun. Jonathan, how about you? Yeah, I can't wait for this one. I've been a huge Lego Star Wars fan or Lego game fan since the original Lego Star Wars, you know, the ones that kind of started it all. Uh, and, and this one, not it feels also like it's really ambitious in terms of what they are going for on a like gameplay design level uh, in terms of changing up the camera a little bit, adding to the the combat. I'm so excited. My my light doesn't even know what to do about it. It's flashing and warning to me. <laughs> um, but there, it, I'm really excited by the potential of them doing such an all encompassing uh, Lego Star Wars game, so I'm I'm looking forward to what what that looks like whenever it comes out. Ryan, you're a family man like myself. Uh, sure. You fan of the Lego games? Definitely. They're they're better than they have any right to be, honestly, yeah. and they've always been. Like that's that's been their sort of endearing charm since the beginning. Is is they're really they do such a great job of being fun for adults and kids. Mm -hmm. uh, their sense of humor is really unique, and you know you're talking about Damon the the, the vague spring 2022 window. Mm -hmm. I like that because we know it's not like tied to a to a Star Wars movie release. It's sure. not tied to anything that, that they're just able to Traveler's Tales can take their time, really get this thing right, because it does appear to be a big game, you know, encompassing all these different Star Wars, all nine Star Wars films. So uh, I like that they're just kind of getting it done when whenever it gets done. And uh, and it's probably just going to be great. And and secretly, too, these are beautiful games like they've. You kind of think of them as, oh, just like, you know, Lego cartoony look. But no, they're they're actually gorgeous. So I'm really eager to see this one on the next gen consoles. Mm -hmm. And then, Ryan, uh, a game that got a lot of time during Microsoft's showcase this week was Dying Light 2, which I think is coming out right around the same time as Halo Infinite. Um, yeah, the day before, I believe. <laughs> well, well, very different game. So uh, not yes. worried about competition there. But how are you feeling about uh, Dying Light 2 these days? Uh, really good now. I, before I was kind of like, you know, it had just been so MIA for so long and that's okay. Games are hard to make, although there was some, you know, they had a little bit of uh, controversy with some of the, the talent working on the game, uh, but they, they've been slaving away on it and well, hopefully not slaving, but working hard on it. And, uh, that gameplay demo really won me over. I loved the traversal that was, that was in there. I mean, you know, that, that game, the first one was very much kind of a, a Mirror's Edge meets Left 4 Dead type thing as, as just the sort of Twitter friendly elevator pitch. Mm -hmm. But now they've they've got the, the, the like grapple. They've got uh, I love the move where you just run at a zombie near a window or a ledge and just grab it and go right out the window and, and use it to surf <laughs> out of the sky and cushion your fall when you land. Yeah. If that's an actual mechanic and not just a one off moment to help you get around easily. 
that's going to be make it really fun to just wander around that world and, and parkour around it. So, yeah, I'm uh, that one's definitely pinging a little brighter on my radar than it was last week. Yeah, I know fans of Dying Light fans have been waiting a long time for this one as well. Uh, okay, as is tradition here at Next Gen Console Watch, we have the results of the po or the poll results from our last episode. When we asked, "What game do you most hope to see at Gamecom next week?" Now that a lot of the dust has settled from Gamescom, we can see how things shook out. Coming in number one, 27% uh, of the vote was Elden Ring, which it's not too surprising. Man, those uh, Soulsborne fans have been looking for this one, waiting for this one for a very long time. This one we know is coming in January, so don't have to wait too much longer. Uh, but yeah, a lot of interest still in Elden Ring. Uh, but number two, I was a little bit surprised, is something else. Just something not from our list. So not Halo Infinite, not Horizon, Forbidden West, not Far Cry 6, just something else. Uh, but I think what might be most interesting about these results is coming in at the very bottom with just, just over 3% of the vote is Call of Duty Vanguard. Most interesting because uh, we that is highly likely to be the best-selling game of the year, as it is as is also tradition in video games. The new Call of Duty must sell the most copies. Um, Jonathan, I'll let you have the the final word in here. Are you, Horizon Forbidden West came solidly in the middle, eighteen percent. Surprised? Not surprised? Uh, I mean, you know, considering we went into the show not thinking PlayStation would really be here at all, uh, I'm glad we saw Horizon. I'm glad enough people were hopeful. Uh, to will that into existence. We also finally got what people were hoping for in terms of a uh, Horizon PS5 performance patch for Zero Dawn that also came out during the show. Sure. So Horizon fans were definitely rewarded for, uh, you know, hoping this would be there. Uh, but uh, as you mentioned, I think Call of Duty is just such more of a known quantity, and especially because we had the reveal a little bit beforehand, I think people were hoping to see things that we haven't seen in some time, like Horizon, like Halo, uh, like Elden Ring, because we've only seen so little of Elden Ring. Uh, so I, I think that the numbers kind of make sense uh, when you look at it that way. All right, well, before we go, we do have a poll for you to vote on for next week, and that is what was the most exciting Gamescom announcement this year? Was it the Halo release date, the Horizon release date, Marvel Midnight Suns, the Saints Row reboot, something else? Make sure to vote at IGN.com, and we will share the results with you next episode. And that just about wraps us up for the latest episode of Next Gen Console Watch, as well as our whole big day of Gamescom studio coverage here at IGN. Thank you so much to my co-hosts, Jonathan and Ryan. If you stuck with us the whole time, you got to see tons of exciting new video game trailers and interviews with the people making some of the biggest upcoming games, but we're only just getting started here. Tomorrow, we've got another full day of Gamescom coverage with lots of big new games, surprises, in-depth interviews, and a brand new episode of GameScoop and our PlayStation podcast beyond. Man, exciting day. From all of us here at IGN and Gamescom Studio, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow.